going live and live. Uh, now we have Thursday, March 24th, 2016. And my, my Kika is late. We don't know where she is, but um, we scheduled that, so we'll have it. First, the announcements. Um, so we have uh, Gurudan, our dearest uh, in, indispensable Gurudan, who administrates and hosts most of the Saturday webinars, asked for help with his administration. So some of the webinars, we need uh, an administrator who would press buttons. So Gurudan would teach you what to, what buttons to press. So you have to be good at pressing buttons and and uh, we schedule it because you have to be there on time, like half an hour, 40 minutes before the webinar, you have to be there and prepare, open it, press proper buttons on the handouts, and it's it's difficult to learn, but you know once you learn, it's very easy. And and then um, you you should be there, and if something happens, you have to press certain buttons, and that's about it. And the advantage is the service to the community. So it would be webinars with Gene, uh, Kerry Newman. Um, Kim and uh, all other our wonderful uh, channelers. So you would have an opportunity to be there, be in the flow of the energy, and to ask questions. So that's a great advantage. Also, I can offer our good administrators. I can offer them free passes to our Reiki classes. So you would be have our Reiki classes for free. Uh, on the precaution side, we had several administrators who just were burned by the energy. There is so much energy going through these webinars that it reveals the truth. So, and the truth, when it's revealed, you know, makes your relationships kind of shine. And when they shine, you can't really be administrated anymore. So, um, you know. People who are not sure that they can commit, it's really a commitment, who can commit, uh, you know, just speak to Gurudan, but make, make sure you can really commit to do, it's not every Saturday, but maybe every third Saturday or every second Saturday, we need your help to be administrative. Otherwise, it's fun. Otherwise, it's fun. It's, you know, being in the presence. It's being there, connecting the wires. Yeah, I already do that. Um. I already do that, Max, and I've enjoyed myself quite a bit, and it's allowed me to learn a lot more about um, different entities and, and the messages that they have to bring. It's really enlightened me, so I would encourage anyone who is interested in this to definitely give it a try. It's pretty fun. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you know, I enjoyed it a lot. It, it's fun. You become I know the worker behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, administrator. It's 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 great. It's a service. Mm -hmm. um, you, get to meet, you get to meet everybody too. It seems like I've gotten to meet a lot more people that are in the Hukalo community, and um, so of course, more people means more love, and so that's a wonderful thing too. Just getting to meet everyone and and all the different places they come from, and it's very interesting. I absolutely love meeting new people, so it, it's been a lot of fun. I, I would encourage yes. anyone to at least give it a try. It's a service, it's fun, and it comes with perks. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so, on Skype, I think, is the best way to contact him. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know other way. If you don't know how to find Gurudan, email me, max at org, and I will direct it, your email to him, to him. That would be the easiest. Or you can contact me on Skype, max. 204507, and I will direct you to Guruda. Next announcement is how to find us. So, if you want to be invited by email to this webinar, so I have a personal list about 100 people, or maybe 50 to 100 people. So, email me at max at humancalling.org. I will add you to my list of um, announcements where, for my webinars, and uh, you will get email email invitation directly to the webinar right when, when I started. Um, what else? How it's posted? So we are humancolony.org. We, I see Liney. Hey, Liney. Thank you for joining. Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Hi, Max. Announcements. How are you? 
Yeah, yeah, not too bad, thanks. How are you? Wonderful. Uh, so you find us on humancolony.org, uh, hucolony.com. Got Ning. The dot Ning one is new. Hucolony.ning. Hucolony.ning.com. And then uh, it's um, uh, Google Plus search for Hucolo, H U C O L O. And then we uh, announce, post our announcements on um, uh, Google Plus, Hugh website, Hugh Color TV website. We post it on humancolony.org site. And on chat boxes, one chat box is called Hugh Color One. So ask any one of us, we will add you to one of those. On uh, Google Hangout chat boxes. I mean, that's a long name, it's Google chat boxes. Then another one is Hucola 2, and there is also a Skype group, like Hucola 1 Skype group, we also post uh, the events there. And uh, unfortunately, you have to like really capture that link at the moment when it started. There is no, it's how Google set it up, but it's for free. You, you can't really have the link before it starts. Maybe you can have half an hour, but not long before that. <sighs> and now let's do some... Uh, chanting. So we are chanting about your DNA and about Jim's getting better. So Jim is getting better. I spoke to him. He called me back finally a couple days ago and he was better. For sure I asked him many questions and he is getting better. So what was that? It was, uh, you know, the cause mostly, most likely was spiritual. But uh, physically, it manifested as some, how do they call it, bronchitis and related things. So he was just weak, and uh, lots of people were calling him and wanting him to do everything possible to get better. And I think uh, the prayers helped, and also just laying down in bed and sleeping, I think, was also wonderful. So we thank the gods, we thank the creators, the creator, the goddess, the helpers, uh, the angelics, the alien helpers, the Reiki energy, healing energy, the elementals, the earth, the humans, the supporters, people who pray to help with, thank everyone. And... Um, I'll just chant a little. Oh. <coughs> Yum. Questions, questions about DNA and chakras. Mm. Yeah, prepare your questions about DNA and chakras. And I have a guest with me, Lucy, and she prefers to be behind the camera, just a little outside. 
Hi, everyone. Hi, Lucy. Lucy is one of us. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I will start with a little. So, just a second, I'll give the controls to everyone so you can mute everyone else. Unless I think you can already mute everyone else. I think everybody can mute any, every, anyone else. Okay, so the idea is I'm learning more about this stuff. And the idea is that chakras correspond to color and to frequency. And what is the biological basis of this relation? Color, chakra, color, chakra. So basically it all comes to the idea of how far is the chakra from the brain. It's about central nervous system. So the highest frequency is on the top. It's the shorter distance, so it goes like really fast, high, high pitch frequency. What goes very fast? That's another question. Obviously, it's a neural, a neural impulse, impulse, but possibly there is, I'm almost certain, there is also neural, meaning electric, right? Electric. There is sound, and there is light, and there is something else which is basically ethereal light, like ether, like if you know ethernet, that's it, ether, ether, ether wave, some sort of non-physical wave goes also, it's in, the, in, the, in our space, but it goes beyond our devices, so, so some sort of vibration, it, it's called in uh, common language, it's called energy, which means some other energy, right, so, Crown is the shortest, and the root chakra is the farthest, and it goes the slowest. So that's what we call rise of vibration. You basically carry your vibration upper in chakras, and usually people mostly reside in their lowest chakras, like solar plexus, sacral, and root chakra. That's the basic of our existence. You are born with root chakra mostly active. And as you grow, you develop your sacral chakra, shorter distance, higher vibration. And with sacral chakra, you learn how to communicate to people physically, to talk and stuff. Then you grow more, you develop your solar plexus chakra, and with that you learn the idea of the control and conflict and power. Very important. And then uh, raising your vibration is going to the higher chakras, which is beyond the veil, basically. Beyond the veil, something supernatural is the heart, higher vibration. So, so that's what we learn, to go in the heart raise our vibration and then higher to the fifth chakra throat and to the third eye chakra which is brain and eyes and the crown now apparently as we understand now there is lots of intermediate steps so the chakras are the major foresight focuses but major vortexes, but it really depends where you focus. If you can focus your vibration on, especially in Reiki, on your heart, but then you can focus on the higher heart, so it's a little higher vibration, but it's still there a little bit, just a little up, below throat, above the heart, and so on. And that is possibly like ear chakra, which is just a little below the eyes, nose chakra, mouth chakra, chin chakra. So it's all about the vertebrae. It's all about the vertebrae. So the happy animals with tails, 
they have lots of lower vibration chakras. They go all the way to the earth vibrations, elemental vibrations, which are for us not very accessible, not accessible at all. So reptilians, our friends reptilians, they are in access, they access in those vibrations. They live, they have all higher chakras, but they also have the tail so they can access the elementals and very, very low, very, very slow vibrations. The bigger they are, this, and the farther the end of the tail, the more they can access. And notice how the cats Cats walk around and they feel the space with their tail, end of the tail, they kind of bend it like that. And even if they dream, their tail is still like kind of sensing the environment, sensing the energies around. So I wish I had a tail. Uh, so that's the main introduction. So it is, it is vibrational. And uh, it is where your attention is focused and also where your soul is mostly attached to your spine, to your frequency vibration. So that point where your focus of attention is now, where is your happiest attachment, where the main energy cord is. It could, I can show it from outside, but it, it can be as well from inside. So that defines, it's called the attachment point, the focus point, and that defines your mode of action, main mode of your action. Obviously, you can shift it up and down as you wish. And uh, some practices allow you to shift your attachment point B or assembly point, you can call it assembly point, B below your root chakra. And that's where you enter into the bottom, lower, how do you call it? Uh, underworld, to the underworld and connect to the animal energies and underworld energy, which it's a special practice. I don't know it. I just heard about it, but it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, especially in relation to the ideas of frequency. And here I would chant a little bit more and invite questions. Yanuma. Questions. Yeah, um, about the chakras, if I can yes. get my little doggy to settle down here. <laughs> Whenever I'm meditating, I, um, I see the colors, I feel them turn, uh, and I do feel the frequency, but somehow or other there's like a disconnect in the, in the bottom chakras for me, in the, in the red chakra, and I don't really know why. Um, I feel like I'm a pretty grounded person. I am barefoot most of the time and ground with the earth and consciously think about grounding with the earth, but that seems to be the only like color and frequency that I don't feel like I feel the rest. Any mm -hmm. any suggestions? 
Uh -huh. All right, so root chakra. The idea of the physical, basically physical work. And physical work such that you really have to focus your attention on it. You really have to go way down to your root chakra and physicality of the existence. So we, some of us, we who are living in the higher ideas, in the thinking, meditating, we so much are forget about our physical body that that um, we disconnect. I usually find it difficult to connect to all three of my bottom chakras. I they they are abandoned, they are lonely, they are not where my attention is. I'm always here. I'm always there. I'm way up there dreaming, dreaming, worrying, dreaming, planning, reminiscing. I'm a creator and an artist, so that, that does explain a lot right there because I am up there too a lot instead of, you know, in my body. <laughs> So coming back to physical and just kind of slow and slow in your thinking is uh, is the way to connect to physical chakra. It's like touch. It's uh, breathing. It's you know the physical processes, the molecules. It's just like feeling your molecules, feeling your food, and all of that physical, like material stuff coming back to matter. <laughs> and the one of the messages recently that came to me physically was you're uh, as smart as you are healthy. That for me was a big surprise. I was always like either smart or healthy. Right? And then they say your physical body defines your all level of smartness, all levels of mind. Your mind is as good as your physical body is. So that's a good excuse to, fo to focus on the physical body and to reconnect to the root chakra. You really have to make your physical body successful to be able to raise higher and tolerate high vibrations, to tolerate your mind, to tolerate your spiritual mind and all of the levels of the spiritual mind. The more physical body is developed, the more your soul can attach to it. It's it's really hard to attach to a physical body when there is, as Bashar says, there is no one there, right? Oh. Now the spine is the health of the spine is the key, and the health of the bones is the key because. They are the resonators. They are a big part of the resonating system. So, well, Max, yes. yes. That may be where I have an issue because I have already had two uh, fusions done to my spinal cord, you know, because the discs went bad. Uh -huh. And I have hardware still in from the last surgery. They uh -huh. were actually two different surgeries. So, the last one still has the hardware in, and um, I have some scar tissue wrapped around that area, so it causes it so that it can't be taken out. That sure. hardware can't be taken out now. Sure. And the and the scar tissue has caused nerve peripheral damage uh, down, you know, both legs. Uh -huh. So could this be the interruption and why why I'm having trouble with the root chakra? Here we go. I mean, I know as much as I told you. As well, I as the spine has been right. manipulated and changed, you know, uh -huh. um, I did put my own bone back in to for the fusion, like uh -huh. instead of instead of a cadaver, um, uh -huh. I just let them take it out of my own hip and put it in sure. to the spine. Mm -hmm. So 
it is still my own DNA that uh -huh. fused. So I don't know if that would be, you know, a disruption, but when you were talking about how the spinal cord is the resonator mm -hmm. and with with a disruption in that area right right before the root chakra, I'm mm -hmm. wondering if that is why I'm having such a difficult time. Sounds like a logical conclusion. Yeah, for me, the common sense an angle says that might be the issue. So is there another way maybe that I can try to reach that since I have that in there? I, I, I don't know if you might know some other practice I could do. Uh -huh. So be gentle to yourself. Don't overwork, don't over uh, emphasize that problem. Because the more you focus on the problem, the harder it becomes. I mean, it's not that bad to be disconnected from your root chakra. It's not a, I mean, may, maybe there is a reason for that as well, right? Um, but I think, so the resonator is, the bone structure is important, right? So especially the periodicity of the bone structure, the period, it makes, makes it, you know, for resonance, the period, for the wave, the period is the key. So if you disrupted the period, I think that in the bone structure, that might cause uh, disruption in the resonance, right? You need the periodic structure to resonate. Um, yeah, because, you know, each, each, each piece of the periodic, if you, each uh, vertebrae would be a resonator when they are distanced in the same distance, in the proper distance, okay, it's not the same, it's it's growing to the back. It's like first it's shorter, shorter, then it's longer, but it is a system for resonation in both directions. It's, it's mm -hmm. lower frequency kind of goes to the higher and back. So there is a certain disruption in the sequence. Um, so you have to live with it now, right? You can't really return it back to normal because the surgery has been done. Right. But there is more than that. There is nerves, which are also the conductors of electricity. Electricity is key to that. Yes. Working on the nerves is is still possible. Working on uh, the health of the nerves, and the nerve is uh, a bundle of living wires mm -hmm. wrapped around an insulator called, um, how do you call it? I forgot. I'm just blanking on it. There yeah, I can think of it. Shelf insulator protein which builds the outside of the nerve. It's like a sheath. Yeah, sheath uh, cells. That they have Perkinia, maybe? I forgot the name. I'm blanking on it. Yeah, but I anyway, there is a, a layer of cells. And, you know, if it is well protected, if they're healthy, happy, are they kind of, I think they're very kind of uh, more like fat insulated like plastic fat insulator so the insulator cell the, the nerves and the electricity doesn't leak out mm -hmm. and when you starve or when the immunity is not good and they can become deteriorated then there is cross talk and they lose the charge so so your energy leaks out and you have holes in your energy flow in your electricity it's very physical but but I believe there is also non physical component to that as well actually I think I have too much energy is what happens because it feels like electricity down my legs and it was so bad at first that I would lose my legs it could knock them right out from underneath of me like I had been hit by lightning uh -huh. so that subsided with medication and um, now I, I feel it but not as intensely absolutely but Tell there is a lot of electricity. How do you deal with it? I mean that's for the rest of your life you have to deal with that too right. much. how do you handle it? To tell, 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 tell me how do you deal with it? What would you, what, what, what's the way to heal it? Well, it's you, you, you know, I just have to mind over matter. I, I will say that. I just, you know, um, try not to uh, concentrate on it. Like you said, the more you concentrate on it, the more attention you give it, then, then of course, the more it's going to hurt. So I don't concentrate on that um, area as much as what um, I used to. This has been an ongoing lesson. This is um, over 11 years of learning how to incorporate that 
into myself and not look at it like an outside entity, the pain that is. And so mm -hmm. now I, I do um, try to move as often as possible. Mm -hmm. That seems to help quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Try to avoid, like you say, try to avoid lifting, take care of my body, eat correctly, which I never used to do. Um, I'm from a fairly poor family, so um, being on the edge of starvation was a normal thing for me growing up. And so my bones at this point, I do have um, osteosporosis. And so um, I take a supplement called Bone Up. And that has a lot of natural things that help to fortify the bones. I also eat a lot of spinach and, and good foods that are, um, you know, uh, no GMO and healthy. And try to fortify as much as I can as an adult. Uh, but, you know, damage has already occurred. So my job now, I feel, is to keep my body as healthy as possible so that no more discs go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it, can, it is being called a progressive uh, disc degeneration. And uh -huh. so the best I can do is try to take care of what I have now. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, try not to think for the most part about the pain issue. But when it does come up, I, I breathe it out, I release it, and allow that to leave my body and be transmuted into love for the rest of the world. And I ask those above me, those ascended masters, to help me with this. And Reiki has helped a lot, I must add, as well. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. I still have to do the master class with you, but um, I'm... I'm got the first two down and I've been practicing and that seems to help me quite a lot. So there's how I deal with it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, one of my friends also have very similar problem and I just wanted to learn from you what, what, what do you do to share with her as well. And a lot of meditation I might add, but that's like I said, that's where I see the chakras, that's where I feel the colors and the only one that I have an issue with connecting with is the root chakra. So I do go barefoot all the time and hoping that that, you know, helps somewhat. I work in the garden a lot barefoot, mm -hmm. um, work with plants, hug trees. Um, I, I feel like I'm kind of like uh, the fairy of the earth, so to speak, because oh. that's, that's where I live most of the time is outside in the summertime. It's really cold here in the winter. Uh -huh. But the home I bought doesn't have a cement foundation or anything like that under it. It's built on the ground. It's um, way over 100 years old. So I feel like that helps me stay grounded as well. Um, I've pretty much looked into everything as far as this house goes, and everything in it is all green now. So uh, there's nothing, no pollutants or anything like that, also taking care of the body. And body, mind, spirit, it's all, it all goes in one to take care of yourself, whether you have a back injury or not, I believe, and Reiki is the topper. Excellent. So, thank you. Uh, one uh, exercise I learned, uh, I can't really, actually I should, uh, I should show. Basically, it looks like in yoga there is uh, a series of exercises where you very slowly, very gently turn your body, uh, basically twist the spine one way or another. Obviously with your spine, don't overdo it, do it gently, but apparently just twisting, twisting the plane of the body is, actually I do like one, the legs go one direction and the front goes another direction, so you do it like like that, very, very slowly. And I, you can do it when you lay down, when you kind of stand in different positions, and then when you stand up, so in all possible ways, face down, face up. Unfortunately, I don't know how, how it is called, so I can't refer you to, to YouTube video, but do you research, search on YouTube for different yoga? Yeah, I've done a lot of different yoga, and Kijong as well, you know, yeah. to try to, yeah. To, uh, to try to just exercise in different ways. All right. Um, 
yeah, walking is a really great exercise too, and I do that quite a bit. So but yeah, the 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 movement where you move together is uh, the best one. Uh -huh. Move everything at the same time, so you're moving but not twisting. So for me, uh, I basically I do a very simple thing. I kind of, you know, the O, the the bird O, it can twist its head all the way around and a little bit more. So that's you know would be the O exercise. You try to just look look behind as far as you can come. And then you do it the other way, very comfortably, without any pain or harming yourself. So that's well, kind yeah. of that. That one I could not do. I would have to move the feet. You know what I mean? To kind of like swing the legs along with it because the very center couldn't stay. That's right where the fusions are. So yes, my very so center can't stay solid like that. Maybe comfortable for you would be like just a half of the turn, but basically. Yeah. Just the conscious yeah. idea of turning. Yeah. And then my hands just tend, I mean, that is too big for me because the energy kind of grows, uh, goes from the hands, so I kind mm -hmm. of stretch the environment with my energy. So for me, I have to work with the hands, kind of helping myself to move along that. Right, like that's what I was saying, but move, move in your uh, feet right along with it as well. And so the feet and legs are in the same in the same movement right along with you. I I think that's a form of Kijang that I practice. And so, you know, that, that does help. Like I said, all movements that are gentle, that they definitely help. Walking is a necessity. You know, walking every single day. Absolutely. The Absolutely. more I can walk, the better I feel. Yeah, walking is very healing. Especially mm -hmm. if it's done with the purpose of healing. And I will do a little chanting for you. So awesome. that will be the chant for um, restoring the health of the spine and enhancing the, sp the health of the spine, especially the lower part of the spine, lower back. Mm, I'm very grateful. Shatu Naraya Shatu Naraya Shatu Naraya Questions, discussions. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I liked what you were saying about the the tail and the lower sub chakras or whatever, like just the lower chakras with like animals. 
you could like mm -hmm. expand on that. I never heard that before. Um, uh, I just heard a little bit about that um, and by Russian teacher Manosov. He says in uh, uh, native Indian traditions, shamanic traditions, there is a special set of rituals where they intentionally lower their assembly point be below the root chakra and that allow them to shift down to the uh, underworld energies. I'm not anyway connected to those. For me it would be not even interesting. So for, for me even the root chakra is not, not very interesting, but you know, da down below it's not my world, so I can comment any much. Yeah, just like never heard of it before, so it just kind of caught my attention. And I just have a dog here. So, so Lirans are Lirans, 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 reptilians Lirans. Have, have tails, so they 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 know better. As as Grindel and uh, Takur, they would know better. <laughs> yeah. I have a dog too. Lirans were the first humans. Lirans. Lirans. In, the, in, in this universe, and then somehow they evolved into the humans which have no tails. So why would be that? Why would a human lose a tail? Even our monkeys have tails, and then humans just lost it. So you know what, Max? Uh -huh. um, my daughter almost married this guy <laughs> that had a little tail. Okay. Hair and everything. Uh huh. So that's kind of odd that you said that. Is that something that was like a kickback, or that's kind of strange? Or a new flavor? He has extra chakra or two. Maybe, huh? Uh huh. I just, uh -huh. I just never heard that that we lost our tail, and I always thought that was kind of strange that it, that that was there in the first place, an anomaly kind of thing. But then you say that, that's strange. So what extra talents that does he have? Hmm, he's a musician. That's that's all I knew. Okay, let's see a correlation. Maybe more musicians have longer tails. We have a little tailbone, but you know, there could be an extra vertebrae of several of them. All right. Any more questions, ideas? Oh, I would like to say something to um, Valerie. Yes. Um, I think uh, a situation uh, like hers is a very powerful, um, it's like a very powerful scar in a big battle. So that would give you a lot of power and probably that's why all the energy that you feel um, is coming from, but you have to embrace um, the fact that you've been in, in battle, I mean in life. Um, so that, that was my only comment. I think that's, that's very right on. My, my life has been like that, yeah. And and yeah, I've always said I need, I should have gray hair <laughs> to show what all I've been through, but I don't. And um, and you're right, there are some scars. Uh, there are scars on the face, scars on the body that says, yes, this has been a battle. And um, I'll be proud of those from now on after you said that, because I've always tried to hide them. So um, maybe now I can step into that a little more. That, that was a really amazing thing that you said. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, just uh, since you mentioned uh, gray hair, yesterday I came across a very interesting science paper. Uh, they just cited, just stumbled upon very strange stuff in India. They, uh, you know, stem cells are now big. You can grow stem cells from the bone marrow, from adult tissue. It's not a big deal. So you can grow them, and then they injected the, them to people for different 
autoimmune things and, and uh, uh, neurodegenerative things, they discovered that people who got stem cells had their gray hair kind of restored back to less gray. There was tons of new black uh, hair pieces coming and uh, starting to growing back. And it kind of, the effect was long enough to, to be very significant. So somehow stem cell, stem cells regenerate, you know, the dark hair. And they commented, obviously, that uh, it is the melanocytes, which make you know, the black melanin, they were basically dead in the, in the hair follicles. And having stem cells kind of revived or brought more melanocytes to the hair follicles. So the, it, the, uh, they just started producing melanin again. So reviving melanocytes with uh, uh, new cells. I don't remember if these cells were autologous, meaning from the same person, or how do you say, allogenous, allogenic from different people. It could be allogenic, but I'm, I'm, I just have to look it up again. I forgot. I think that would be the next question. You know, can you just fix? You? I don't know, my gray hair just came last couple couple years, and you know, it coincided with depression. I was depressed, and gray hair just shifted uh, lots lots of gray hair. That's interesting you say that, Max. My mom is now um, 72 uh -huh. and she has not had gray hair until this year. She lost two brothers in the last couple years and since then she got very depressed and along with that depression came gray hair. And I'm not really a depressed person at all. So maybe that's why I'm not getting the gray hair. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that it correlates. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, she has not had any gray hair whatsoever. And then all of a sudden, now in the front, it, there's a bunch of gray hair. It's a okay. stress thing, maybe, too. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like extra stress. So basically, uh, the lesson, take home lesson is. <laughs> get your stuff together and uh, stop being depressed. It's it's not easy, but it is possible. Not easy, but possible. Uh, you have to take care of yourself, especially because your spiritual development relies on your physical body, on the health of your physical body. So yes, losing close people is could be stressful, could be depressing, but it is again the question of perspective. You could be sad that they have gone or you could be happy that they lived with you and you had an experience of living with them, right? And that's where your spirituality kicks in. And mm -hmm. unfortunately she didn't have any. So when you don't have any real beliefs, then I think the pain is a lot more. Because for me, at the funerals, I felt like it was like a family reunion and they were there and everyone was there that had passed. And I could feel that presence there. But for her, they are just gone. Okay. And that changes everything. All right. So here is what I learned. It's another big piece of uh, puzzle which I have to still kind of piece together with the other pieces. Again, it comes from Manosov. M-O-N-O-S-O-V, Manosov. He only teaches in Russian, so I will be maybe returning. He learns from India and stuff, so uh, the knowledge is out there. It just He kind of put it together and carried it in condensed way so I could get it. Uh, he's on YouTube. So the idea is that seven, why do we have seven chakras? And it, I will bring it maybe 10, 15 minutes, I will bring it to that idea of depression and beliefs and spirituality. So why do we have seven chakras? There is nothing in nature around us which is seven. Planets may be seven, but maybe ten. It's really hard to figure out how do you count the planets. Uh, naturally, I don't see much of the seventh 
around. You can find some of the seventh in Merkaba, in Tree of Life, in uh, in those things, but uh, like really, if you look around, it, it's you know there is very little of number seven. Six is there in uh, Honeybee Comb, or Honeycomb. Uh, uh, in crystals of water, there is six. Five is some of the flowers have five. Some of the flowers have seven, but but very little of that. So uh, they say the ancient secret knowledge, ancient how do you call it, uh, esoteric knowledge says that it was an Atlantean experiment to bring, uh, to build the whole system around the seven, uh, number seven. Which could be right, but I think it might be pre-Atlantean. It looks to me that it is, it comes from the humans that lost their tail from Lyrans to, uh, from Lyrans to Orion. I think it is, it comes from Orion actually. So my understanding, Orion was first to bring number seven, and then it brought it to Earth as Atlantean culture. But again, it's it's you know the question which has to be answered by someone else. Maybe we can ask our higher friends, the Lyrans, how how do they feel about seven chakras and number seven and stuff like that, and Orions. Is there a number seven uh, as essential in Orion as it is on Earth? In any case, there was an experiment where they enforced their veils between the chakras and enforced the veils between the layers of the society. And uh, you can see that strongest in Indian, ancient Indian caste system. So where you have several castes and the borders were very strong. But actually these castes are everywhere. St still we, uh, we have lots of leftovers in, in, any, in every country. The layers of society are mixing now and they're mixing for last many years, like 100 years, 200 years. So there is a nice re hybridization, remixing of the genetics, remixing of the cultures. Uh, I am, uh, my parents are from different layers of the society. My one parent is from higher level of the society and my other parent is from lower level of society. My grandparents are the same, they are from different levels. Their grandparents also were mixed. So. So that mixing goes for several generations. There were first, there was a huge separation and then, then the mixing started with all their falling of the veils. So that is obviously progressive. Slavery is over in big part of the world uh, and uh, it's, it's less pronounced. Now it's much more possible to intermarry into higher and lower levels of the society. And the same thing with the chakras. We don't have as rigid system of incarnations and lessons as we had in the past centuries. But basically the Atlantean experiment was very powerful and we still kind of solve the consequences of it. And it was so powerful that it caused the fall of the Atlantis basically there was so much energy and so much of the, they called creative conflict or destructive conflict, conflict that brought the fall of the Atlantis. And maybe Orion Wars as well were based on that, the same kind of conflict. So the idea was that new souls progress from lower chakra level to higher chakra level. So the lower chakra root chakra level is the physical worker and it's so it has so in undeveloped energy flow that when 
this physical first level worker dies, it loses it loses the memory of the life. Basically, reincarnation doesn't carry on the, his experiences. So that's why for them it's important to live the whole life and progress enough to build enough of their own energy to to carry it over to the next lives. Thank you. So, um, that's why they're called untouchables in India. They were called untouchables in India because if you kill a physical worker, they can't reincarnate. They, they have to start over, basically. It's not they anymore. They don't carry the experience. But higher levels, they can carry the experience. Again, it's from the past. Now it's all mixed together. Now you can do the spiritual design has, is, is, is changing all the, all the society as well. So, and the highest achievement for the physical worker, the first level was to learn the communication. So basically they were very poor communicators and for them the magical knowledge was how to communicate. And that would correspond to the child development as well. So the child learning how to speak, that's the first chakra development to the second. So second chakra is communication. So the physical workers had, you know, the root chakra working and second chakra not as well working, so they couldn't even communicate too well. So second chakra level, so they graduated, they learned the first chakra lessons, learned the physical lessons, and usually there is nine or 12 physical lessons for one life or series of, of lives. And then they graduate to the second caste and the second uh, layer of the society, which is traders, communicators. So traders, their main quality was to have everyone as friend and they would correspond to our salespeople where the second chakra is most dominant and the communication is the main thing they do. Talk, listen, and it could be very meaningless communication, but it's still a lot of talking, all right? For them, the highest achievement of their level is to gain the ability to fight, gain the ability to uh, overpower other people, and gain the ability to grow in the societal structure. And again, it's like nine to 12 lessons in that uh, level of incarnations. It could be one incarnation, it could be like 100 incarnations. How far do you go? Again, in, now, in uh, nowadays, it looks like people can jump between the castes and the layers of the society and the, between the chakra layers. But it is again, the focus of assembly point. If you're mostly in your uh, traders assembly point in the sacral chakra. That's, you know, communication is everything. Everybody is a friend and that's how you take the role. And then the third level are warriors and government people, cor corporations people of the third caste, basically expressing the power, uh, thinking about the powers, thinking about the conflict, fighting in physical ways and fighting in non-physical ways, ways. And that's the solar plexus chakra. So that's your assembly point and lots of people are fighters. They really create the conflict if the, you know, even if there is no conflict around, they create it by themselves. And they need to be in or they need to sub lose, but they need to be in that uh, conflict situation where they either dominate or subordinate or subside, sublime, how they call it, and go under, but they have to be in that relationship, who is on the top. And it's very familiar, that's most of the modern world, either uh, salespeople or the, the executives, all sorts of managers and executives working through the solar plexus. And actually, actually can tell where the assembly point is by the shape of the body, so big, Lower chakra area is mostly the physical big. Uh, sacral chakra area is mostly the 
uh, communication and big uh, solar plexus area is mostly the the fight over the control. And then there is next level, and again the the highest level of their development of the warrior is getting into the magic part. And when the warrior learns the magic, it is usually again used for the fight. So it's black magic, fighting magic, all of, all of those. And then you go to the heart chakra, and that's and, and upper chakras. Heart and upper is all together. It is healers, extrasensors, uh, clairvoyants, psychics, uh, magicians, true saints, all, all of the above. And um, that's where you go develop your intuition, your emotions, your empathy, and go beyond the fight, beyond the trade, beyond the deals, beyond the physical, so you go beyond. And uh, here, the heart chakra, if your assembly point is currently in the heart chakra, your extra sensory abilities come through your overlay to your uh, hands sensations and hands uh, sending the energy. So Reiki is assembly point on the heart. And it is just how the things are connected in the body. So your soul is connected through the heart and whatever soul your soul tells you comes to you as the sensations of the touch one way or another. And you work your Reiki through the hand. If your assembly point goes to the throat chakra, it is an ears, I guess that would be both together. You would hear the voices, right? You would hear the messengers. You would speak, you know, the channeling is assembly point and the throat. When Jim was learning channeling, they did something, our alien friends did something to his throat, put some painful, uh, you know, put some implants which were painful, but he kind of went over that and then he started channeling. So that was interesting. And that is interesting from this new perspective. So channeling is assembly point at the throat. Then uh, third eye chakra, when your assembly point is in the mind, you see the things, you it's clear vision and uh, getting the answers. Not sure what happens to the assembly point in their head, but some people are like really there. Some people are really there. And their connection to God is so direct, it's really hard to translate. So they first get some guidance there and then it kind of gradually descends to the mind and tra is translated to the verbal, to their, you know, to the language we can understand, to the ideas we can comprehend. So it's it's beyond, beyond their, beyond the mind. So higher chakra connection is beyond the mind. There is also a development of Uh, different abilities. So first you learn to sense things, then you learn how to heal people. So you become a healer. You not only take information, you kind of can control, not, not control, can influence some things in living beings. And then you possibly can affect, so highest level of magician and uh, in human society are capable of affecting their events. It goes beyond their health. It goes into the events, into the luck, into the success. So this is highest level of magic, highest level of uh, working through higher chakra. So I was planning to come to the idea of depression and spirituality. So 
basically the spirituality of people who live in the lower chakras it it it's hard for them to jump it's still possible because now it's all possible but sometimes it is hard for them to jump so if you are a physical worker your spirituality is best next level is communication so i guess just by talking and working on the magic of communication that would be their next step that's their lesson that they learn at the moment for the traders next lesson is martial arts any form of magical fight art magical fight magical conflict because they are not co in conflict by their nature they grow into the conflict so for them the conflict could be the upgrade of their the lesson of their life for the warriors the next conflict is to become a healer right to become uh, a psychic and a healer so that's the upgrade and again for a healer that the that's you know to become a better healer and when you kind of develop even more to become a healer not only for body for the body but also for the planet for the society for yeah for the planet and the society for friends family for all closers and bigger circles for the events and projects so so project project magic and uh, when you go even higher I, I guess it is it is the level of which goes beyond the beyond the words of the it goes to the higher walls you become the connector you do certain work which connects angelic basically angelic work you connect the higher levels and lower levels and work on the level of creation work on the level of creation and again it is nice scheme which worked in uh, atlantis time possibly pre-atlantis or uh, orion times but now it's all mixed together it's all mixed together it's all mixing together so it is progressive to jump through the levels to skip the lessons and to learn reiki and to learn things beyond reiki so it's maybe good to to ignore that it's maybe good to ignore the limitations and believe that everything is possible in one lifetime and it will be possible in one lifetime. So again, about your mother, it is, you may ignore the fact that there is so much knowledge about psychic world and spiritual world. Maybe you need to figure out how to help her with the, her highest excitement, her life lesson at this stage of development. Well, whatever is inspiring her, it could be anything. I completely agree with that. And um, she has asked me to help her put it in a garden this year. So I'm going to do that. I think that's her highest excitement right now. And your words have helped me make my final decision on that. And so we'll work together and we'll leave it at that right now and allow her to get mm, some joy out of that. Thank you. And also in families, it's it's almost never the same level, especially now when the genetics is mixed. Maybe in the old times there was a genetics for third chakra more active and the genetics for fifth chakra most active. But now everything is so mixed. You are all hybrids. And, uh, you know, I just look at my closest environment. They're all over the place in terms of assembly points where they develop in life and where they go and uh, it also brings a lot of forgiveness when i see that they are growing from a communicator to a fighter that's their path that's their lesson i i cannot judge their desire to fight because that's what they're supposed to do at this life right so so uh, i can only embrace their development in that direction <laughs> Any questions, comments, Lucy, Valerie? Uh, forgiveness is a is an excellent answer, I think, to a lot of uh, people's problems right now. Um, 
I recently have found forgiveness for many things that were perpetrated when I was younger. And uh, it has been a freeing experience. Uh, I've been going through a lot of changes. And I will say, especially since obtaining Reiki and learning about that, it seems to have opened a door there for me for forgiveness and for allowing that. And not just, and not, it, it, I've realized it is not about so much having to talk and work out the things with the other person as it is uh, having an inner discussion with yourself and seeing the other point of view and seeing that if you are in that person's position, would you choose that same thing? Mm -hmm. And um, you can understand more why the decisions were made and why you needed to go through those things in your life and how that changed you and allowed you to grow and learn. And some of the best things come from a pretty dirty bottom. <laughs> you know, we eat food from, from, from earth, from dirt. And so I will say that I came from a pretty dirty bottom and I have managed to see that there is light at, at the top and um, allow that, allow that light in, allow that spirituality in, allow the forgiveness in. Because with that, you grow and you grow stronger, I must say. And yes, I have been a fighter, a warrior and have the scars to prove it. But I'm proud of all of that and who it's made me today, as I'm sure other people will be, too, if they look inside their own souls and search for those same answers into where forgiveness lies, because it does lie inside yourself in a pool of love. And to find that is a release of just that love. And, you know, it's brought my mother and I much closer and to a place I never thought we would be. And I'm able to hug her, love her, and truly feel that now. Whereas we were not able to do that until this last year. Wow. And I am now almost 55 years old. So it has been a lifetime of learning, of learning about where forgiveness comes from. I ask anybody who's listening to please don't let it take that long. Mm -hmm. Look inside yourselves as soon as you can, as soon as you realize that there is a problem. And find that joy, that forgiveness with these people in your life. They're there for a reason. Whatever choices they've made has led you to where you are now. And be grateful for that. And I am. I'm grateful for every scar I carry right now. I'm grateful for every lesson that I've learned from those who have wronged me. And I've forgiven that. And all I come from in the end is love. Um, a perpetrator that uh, I never thought I could say I loved passed recently to the other side. I thought I would be in joyous uh, in joyous pain at his loss, but instead there was forgiveness. So in the forgiveness, there was love. So you can even do it for someone who has already passed to the other side. Yes. Let's do some chanting. Do you do chanting as well? You know, I could, but but uh, I have a lot going on right now. My dog's getting upset, so I better not, because she'll be interfering all the way through. I see. Okay. So ch chanting about forgiveness. I just find that I can't express tragedy in uh, speaking. I just can't speak tragically. It's blocked. And when I speak tra about tragedy, it's, it's pitiful. But when I see it, I kind of can experience it tragic feeling so i think it's very liberating and uh recently i had experience last webinar uh, we ch chanted across the pacific ocean with kim so she was in australia i was here in the west coast so we had the same uh, carrying tone and we just chanted the same melody taking turns 
That was interesting. Yeah, I heard that. It was beautiful. Thank you. Um, so let's do the forgiveness chant. Yai sai na Yai sai na Rai na Yai sai na Rai Rai na Hai Murai Hai topics to bring up um, can I just add one thing quick Matt? Yeah, sure, I don't know why or how but I was able to do that entire chant with you never having heard that before it was just innate thank ah. you ah. that's interesting thank you Lucy do, do you have anything um, well, I just came with um, a, this feeling, um, it's saying that we all have a message and we need to communicate that message. Um, Sometimes we look for answers in the uh, in in uh, wrong places, but the heart knows the the truth, and the heart tells us how to get to that answer. Um, which is going to give us peace and and all the things that we need. That, that's it. Thank you so much. I myself have have a little trouble sometimes discerning with so much information coming our way right now. And I know I'm not the only one as I talk to many people that are in our group. Um, the discernment, finding what's right in your heart, how you feel when it's the right thing. Can you maybe expand on those things? Um, personally, when something is right um, in the heart, it feels like, um, like if your heart is... Um, 
like pounding, like trying to shout it out. And I think the part that makes us doubt is not um, other thing, but fear. Fear of risking, fear of, um, uh, of failing, fear of going against what everybody else um, wants. So there's something inside everyone and it tells it, this is feeling good. Um, it's more like a sensation. Um, And you have to do it without fear. Um, it's hard for me to explain um, because I just feel it. Um, and even for me, even when I feel it, the fear is the most, um, the thing that stops me from doing many things. But when you can put together your heart and the action taken, it feels a joy inside, like an accomplishment. And that's how you prove that you make things right. Whether when you don't, you still have that um, doubt inside of yourself, like, what if I had done this? What if I had done that? And it doesn't matter the outcome of your decision. It doesn't matter if somebody tells you, oh, but you could have done this or if you would have get more if you had done the other thing. But that's um, outside, I would say garbage because they are interfering with what we, our heart is uh, knowing that it's best for us, even when people cannot comprehend, even when it's going against society or anything else, even when it feels like you're losing, the heart knows exactly um, that it's the right decision. Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. I, I, yeah. I would agree. I, I I learned that recently, like, you know, I guess with Reiki and stuff. So I have to make a decision and um, there is so many arguments for and so many arguments against. And in the past, I was often going after the idea of service, but what is the best for, for others, what's most logical, what's most safe. And very often it leads to indecision. And recently I just kind of got several very powerful kind of lessons and messages saying that it's better to decide than to stay undecided, even if you decided wrong. And again, it's the question like, you know, there is that potential. Like right now I have, you know, I'm doing lots of planning and I can do that or I cancel that or I can do that. And that seems to be way more logical. Lots of people will be happy. And if I don't do that, lots of people might get upset. But the other thing looks so attractive. And is it attractive because it is, uh, how do you say, mm, because it is my negative sides are wanting it or because there is a spiritual tool there? So that's, you know, again, heart versus what? Fear. So it's again about chakras. Is it my uh, sex drive driving me there? Or is it my social drive driving me there? Or is it my um, inner knowing drives me there? So, so, you know, how do you like tune in your spectral analysis? Mm, is it from heart? And that is from fear. This is from uh, my lower desires this is from my higher desires and this is just for knowing that I, you know if i do that that would be right and sometimes if you just ask these questions and i 
all you know, often use hands because Reiki hands are tuned to connect to the energy that comes from the spiritual. You know, it so becomes obvious. If I do that, that would be great. I will be guided, I will be protected, and uh, maybe sometimes it's good to be selfish. Maybe it's always good to be selfish. And maybe it's always good to be selfish in a smart way. So sometimes you just have to do what is really feels good and um, just say to other people that I'm sorry, that's what I have to do. I'm guided there and uh, I will, uh, <laughs> I will, uh, you will have to live with it, and um, I still love you. That's that kind of the message. <laughs> and if I make a mistake, that's all right. Maybe that's a lesson I go there to learn. So I just repeated what you said in, a, you know, from my perspective with real current experience. I still don't know the answer, but it feels that I got to go to some place and do something which I would normally not do. In, in the past, I wouldn't do that. In the past, I would just not even thinking about doing that. <laughs> I agree with you. When you're younger, it seems like we don't take that time to ask those questions. Uh -huh. You know, and um, it is a necessity. I have too. Have I mean, I've went down some wrong roads by not asking those questions and just following not my heart, <laughs> not knowing how to discern. Um, so it is important. It's a really important part of your life to bring together this body, soul, spirit combination in that you do understand where you're coming from, where those thoughts are coming from, that helps to discern what is really right and what is really coming from your heart. This is something I didn't know as a younger person. And the older I get, the more I rely on my heart to show me the way. And I literally ask for that in my meditations. Please help me negotiate my life from my heart with all goodness in mind, the highest goodness for everyone. That This is things that I believe are really important that we, we do this daily and, uh, you know, treat others literally how we would like to be treated. And we will see a different world unfold. I, I am a true believer in this. And uh, I can't be swayed from that no matter what any societal things are set are telling me I will still have a garden that I share my food from with anyone who wanders by and would like to taste it my table will expand and continue to expand to include anyone who is hungry and needs a plate thank you Max your words have been just so so all-inclusive today I really appreciate it thank you Lucy so let's do the little yes, challenge let's see. for, for um, listening. Yeah, so discernment, yeah, spiritual discernment. What is right and what is wrong? Haruya, laga majuya, haruya laika majuya halama. Reka la ju ya ju halama reka ya ju ya hai lai ma reka ra ju ya hara ma reka ra ju Okay, next question, and the last one, I guess, for now, would be 
Alaini asks, Max, what do you think of past lives affecting DNA? Past lives affecting DNA. So, what do I think? Um, oh, just one second. Can we welcome sure. Shiny? Yay! Let's try to welcome Shiny. Bless us. Give us a blessing. Do you want to learn a galactic language? Whichever goes. Okay. Sutana wa nae, keato so, moea takawa, shatakato, eato so, wana alako wa ye yashia, aleye yakomo, mama toko toso, sumnaniati, giako, mama takoshi, shana wa alako so, ala moea, weako so, matatoko, Teana Tamawaheya Shiasum. Heya ya shiasu. 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 Heya ya ya shiha. Hey, hey, All right. So, Sean, prepare if you have any questions. Um, so, what do I think about past lives affecting the DNA? So DNA is sort of physical and sort of fixed. So you have your sequence of the DNA in every cell. You have three gigabytes of your code for this life. Um, it possibly can be changed through meditation, the, the primary sequence. But of course, absolutely, their structure of it can be changed. So there is a primary molecule with A, G, C, T, G, C, G, A, G, 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 A, 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 T, 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 C, G, G, uh, 3 billion betas. Uh, in every cell, the same sequence, uh, making up the chromosomes, packed in the chromosomes. But the structure, how it is wrapped around, how it is modified with methylation marks, every C might have a methylation mark. That structure is sort of flexible. So as you get older, you get more and more methylation marks. Uh, and the structure becomes more and more chaotic and more and more incoherent. incoherent. So by doing healthy practices, by having your mind in a good state, healthy mind, healthy practices, healthy body, healthy energy flow, healthy paths in life, healthy relationship to your lessons. You bring your DNA to coherence, to order, to beauty. It becomes beautiful. The angels of DNA look at your DNA and say, mm, so beautiful. The little uh, Mm, spiritual bodies, spiritual cells going around your DNA and fixing it would get a lot of help and they say, yeah, your DNA is in perfect shape and it is well energized, well structured, well taken care of, well purified. And uh, that allows you to resonate. So there is a perfect resonation between your DNA which makes the which produces the energy waves and the chakras. So basically ch your chakras, the energy of your chakras is produced by DNA in your body and the nerves in your central nervous system. So it's all together. It's all resonating. It's all one system, one body, one organism, one resonation units. And it is in physical, and beyond physical, multiple layers beyond physical. So it's all together, all one life. And when the body dies, your root chakra first gets silenced, your second chakra gets silenced, the third chakra gets silenced, and the rest is taken back 
and recycle to the next incarnations. So what you do with your DNA now affects your future incarnations, affects the health of your higher chakras and how they will be inherited to future incarnations to return to the tree of life and enrich the tree of life. And the past lives affect the energy flow, affect the lessons, affect the charges, the karmic charges, what is the value, the emotional charges of different aspects of life. Your fears are enlarged, defined by your past life traumas. You might be afraid of heights because you fell down in your past life, right? You might be afraid of drowning because you drowned in your past life. You might be afraid of police because you were imprisoned in past life or uh, executed in past life. And so, Max, is it to our benefit to do a past life regression to find out if these things are uh, influencing our life now? Sure. For many people, that would be a next step. It would be a step step up. When you do one right life regression, second life regression, third, and you kind of learn from that, you just figure out it doesn't really matter. The specifics of that life don't really matter as long as you understand that this fear in you comes from that life, the previous life, and that your opportunity in this life is to heal that past trauma. So that's basically the dry knowledge, the essential knowledge which you need to bring from the regressions. So when you just realize, I always have in this life that fear, and that didn't originate in this life, so obviously it comes from one of the previous lives. Obviously. I mean, it's obvious that you don't really need to regress to understand it. It's kind of, oh, I always am afraid of police. Why would be that? <laughs> or doctors. <laughs> Why would be that? Or snakes. Why would be that? Or crocodiles. I, I, in Russia, we have uh, that beautiful image of very friendly crocodile, and it was very nice and, and, and nice. And then I visited the zoo in uh, New Orleans, and when I saw live crocodiles face to face, I was just completely, uh, I had a, how do you say, I had a complete breakdown. I laid on the floor in pain for half an hour, and my kids were like, just didn't know what to do with me. You know, it was hot, so people wouldn't be surprised that somebody lays on the floor. But, but I was just, and then I realized it was just past life. I was, I guess, eaten by a crocodile in the past life. So that, that's simple. So I didn't need to do life, life, past life regression to know that. That was so obvious. So it's the first time I, I met them, and I just, ah, it's something I have to. And uh, I guess the, the lesson was to uh, be friends with Grindel and learn how to reconcile with your reptilian nature. You know, we all, we all had uh, a lot of reptilian in us. So it's... Uh, it is, it is to be reconciled. It is to be healed. Okay, DNA and past lives. So the, the, the past lives bring karmic charge. It is how do you relate to others. Some people you have no interest in other people, there is no karmic charge. And some people you see them for the first time and there is so much emotion coming, so much charge there that you feel either positive or negative, you feel that you are attracted to resolve it one way or another. And it's again, it's your choice what to do with it. Sometimes you can go all the way and resolve it, and sometimes you say, I'm sorry, it's not my choice to resolve it at all. I will just block it and keep moving. It's again, you choose your lessons. You have so many choices, you can choose. You are not destined to resolve certain things, but they will be offered over and over one way or another. And sometimes it's very funny, you can see that person, your very your relationship to this person is very strongly charged. And what's interesting, there was a person, almost a copy of that in your youth, and it couldn't be the same person. 
and it was the same charge, the same lesson, and just offered to you by uh, the same energy manifested in two different people. So DNA. Um, that is what on the surface. I'm sure there is more, but basically the idea, let's bring the idea of the fractal. So your DNA has little tiny primary sequence of AGCTs, very tiny ones. Each of them is about a, a fraction of a nanometer. So meter, millimeter, micrometer, nanometer. It's like three, six, nine, ten orders of magnitude down from a meter. So you're two meters, so say two angstroms, ten angstroms, hundred angstroms is the size of, of this nucleotide, very tiny, ten orders of magnitude down in size. And then um, there is a, and they are beautiful geometric forms, beautiful geometric forms. Some sacred geometries work in their full steam. Now, they are similar in a way to a bigger assemblies of those, uh, multiple nucleotides together. And those resonate to, again, a bigger, it's called fractal, when the structure is self, similar to itself, just a much bigger scale, and then again bigger scale, and then again bigger scale. So it's scaling down and up in a similar, in a, what's that word? Um, I don't know the word, but uh, similarity, structural similarity. So it's uh, like you and your child, especially the woman and it's her child, it's one thing inside another, very similar structure, it's fractal. A woman and a child is a fractal and the child and some inner forms are also fractals. So it goes all the way to DNA. And your chakras are designed by the same principle as your DNA. It's spirals all over the place. Spirals and uh, how do you call them? Vortexes. So, so we don't understand the full mechanics of that. We understand uh, the idea of Tree of Life, of Merkaba, and of different uh, platonic solids. There are platonic solids in DNA, and there are platonic solids in chakra design. So past lives shines through all this fractal. Shine The past lives, all the past lives shine through all this fractal. And it is a big part of the energy which makes it vibrant, your past life. Without your past lives, you wouldn't be here, right? So lots of experiences you grab from the past lives, and they shine through the fractal, or through the fractal and through the, through the structure, right? And it is both limitations and fears and energy also some things are just energized you energize your relationship with your past life unfinished business and coming back to Bashar the idea of the time being relative time is a an artificial construct. At the time, our life is an artificial construct, and the time is an artificial construct. And the idea of past life is also an artificial construct. So we live in a computer game where we are connected to certain pieces of tree of life, certain lives in the tree of life, which has been in the past, which have been in the past. So that is an artificial construct. And we reached certain level of maturity as a homo sapiens, as a civilization, as individuals, that we, it is decided, it's not dictated to us to which past lives to connect. So essentially, the veil is so thin and so transparent that you can connect to any past life. You can connect to any life, past or future. It's all relevant maybe you need certain approvals from your gui guides. So, you know, I want to be a, an incarnation of Einstein, or I cannot be, you 
in the incarnation of Einstein because he, I think he died after he was born. But maybe Tesla, for example. That would be possible. So you ask, you apply, and uh, you get excited, and your guides or maybe council uh, of your guides might decide, okay, let them connect. And psh, the code of the program, the experience is now yours, and it becomes your past life. So it's not as fixed as it is usually considered. It is flexible. Even your genetic code is flexible. If you decide to change it, it's possible to change it just by spiritual means. So you can shift into a new body with a new genetic code. You can shift to a new uh, life with mm, new past lives. It's relatively flexible. I guess that helps to that perspective. Should I chat or are there any comments here? That's very, very interesting. I'm, I'm still kind of thinking about that whole thing with the, you know, it, it really made sense to me with the, the mom and the baby. It, it sort of goes like the Russian dolls. Um, it just keeps going and going and going Absolutely. to infinity. And, and just like some of the, the paintings of Alex Gray, the more you look into them, the more you see. And they just keep going into infinity. Mm -hmm. it, consciousness does not end. And so the past lives, that wouldn't end either because that's a consciousness that you're carrying. Correct? Is that correct? Is that what I'm, what I'm getting here? Is as that as as yes, when the past know, lives, your consciousness... Part of your consciousness has to come through because it doesn't end. It's very interesting to me. Ah, uh, sure. Sure. Hey, Shiny, any thoughts? Uh, any thoughts? Um, um, go ahead. I'm just observing and listening. I do agree with what most Max is saying. Thank you. Yeah, um, I guess the more we shift to the idea, I, I really like the idea of aliens. I really like to connect to yellow aliens. It makes me feel happy. In my meditations, I just admire them all the time. Yeah, yellow Pleiadian friends, call, come over. Let's let's have together in the, in the spirit, in my dream, in my meditation. So, you know, I guess I. As the, that door opened for me, I connect more to my alien past lives. And when I meet another Yale here, a Yale hybrid, it makes me happy. Oh, I, that's a Yale hybrid. I recognize the traits, like mental and also shape-shifting trait and lots of other. So I guess it's flexible and I guess it's rigid. It's up to us what to decide. You know, it's up to us. It's also, also as Manosov says, it's defined by the level of your spiritual energy flow, level of your spiritual energy. Your body can feed so much spiritual energy. And when you breathe more, it might burn you. When you drain more, when you kind of lose it, you kind of become unhealthy, then you lose it, you go low, depressed. So it's the level of spiritual energy. And... Uh, Especially in the spring, you can see like, especially uh, everywhere, right? Especially everywhere in Russia, where is lots of water and northern part, lots of water, especially in the spring. The rivers, which are tiny little creeks in the spring, the snow is melting right now. Yep. End of March, snow is melting. And you can s take a boat and go to a, to a nearby village just by, by river channels. It's kind of all flat, all filled with water. The forest is like a couple feet of water, and then there are like canyons, more water. Sometimes it's kind of bubbly and flows very fast. Sometimes it's just steel. But, you, you know, it's possible to go to a nearby village from one village to another, which is not possible in any other time of the year because water is high. And same thing here in San Diego, so like in the winter there were a few big rains and there's just rivers raised and you know, things connected and things like that. And 
some things were distracted. But basically, the idea when you when your body can fit more of spiritual energy, when it flows really well, lots of new things become possible. And one of the things which becomes possible is to reconnect to other past lives, just to remember them. Oh, I had this past life. And now I am a new shape of my soul. My soul received another upgrade. Upgrade. Yep. So I noticed in my life when like I'm really, really desperate, I invite, I want my life to be upgraded. I will deserve it. I will work hard. I will achieve something. I will serve something. And please give me an upgrade of my soul. And then woof, you have a new new understanding of who you are, new piece of energy which is added. I guess that's the point. Yeah, and as you said that, you know, it's really like a rainy, cloudy day here. And as you said that, the sun just came out. Uh, <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> the universe agrees with you. <laughs> yeah, I like doing that. It's my favorite. Yeah. How about you make the sun come out? And sometimes yeah. it does, and sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, it's really hard to break a big cloud. But, you know, you work on breaking the big cloud, and then the whole sky, the clouds just shift, and it's a blue sky. Yeah. It's spring. Yes, it allowed and some... Did you make it, or did you do you define your reality? You just shifted to the reality where the sky is blue. Well, yeah, I definitely shifted vibration throughout this hang out and um yeah i'm very thankful for that for your guest today as well uh, Eric, it's just been a very enlightening time um yeah i like i say my vibration has definitely went up a notch or two i hope everybody else watching has that same effect it's yes. it's wonderful to feel like that it's to like this <laughs> your heart is full Beautiful. All right, let's do the last uh, closing chant, and um, uh, I will repeat the announcements, and then we'll close. Thank you, everyone, for thank you, Valerie and uh, Lucy, and uh, people who visited for being here, and thank you for the uh, listeners who will watch us later. Oh, it's been my pleasure. And I think also the people who sent Jim their prayers, energy, healing energy, and meditations and chants for his recovery. He feels better, and that's uh, a wonderful collective work of ours. Thank you all. Um, yeah, let's send more healing energy shoot to Jim. That yeah. will be the purpose of this chant. <laughs> Uh, and the, the, the sound J, Joe, J, G, 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 G would be for Jim. Okay. Yan to Rahayan to Rahan Jai Han. Yan to Rahan Jai Han. Yan to Rahan Jai Ramaya Ramaya Of our dear, dearest Guru Dan invites more admins to help administration of Saturday webinars. So it would be a commitment 
to do every other or every second other or every one of the three Saturday webinars, basically pressing the buttons to connect the channeler and the audience. Yes, Guru Dan and I already have two days, so I mean, it would be like every third Saturday the way it is. So it, anybody who wants to help is most welcome to join in. It is fun, it is entertaining, and it is a very loving environment. And it is a commitment and it is a service. Yes. You really have to be able to do that. And you have to be there in advance, connect to the channeler, connect, announce to the audience. Uh, Guru Dan is wonderful. He mastered all the tricks. He knows more than I how to press all these buttons in Google Hangouts. Way more than I. <laughs> um, I guess having a, a reliable internet connections, connection is essential. Uh, not far, the speed doesn't matter. Your, the signal doesn't come through your computers. The signal, you just kind of turn it on and then signal goes directly from the channeler and the audience to the Google server. So, so speed doesn't matter, but you have to have reliable connection which doesn't drop too often. Uh, so connect to Guru Dan, and if you don't know how to connect to him, connect to me, max at humancolony.org, or uh, Skype is max 2040507, and I will connect you to Guru Dan. Uh, and if you want to be invited to my uh, broadcasts, email me and say add me to your list, and I will add you to my list, and I will send invitations uh, to before the broadcast, so we'll have the invitation link. Uh, by email, and again, my email is max at humancolony.org. That is all, and thank you all very much, Valerie. Thank you much, and Lucy. Thank you much, and everybody have a wonderful uh, time of the day and uh, time of the year. All right, and Namaste. Namaste. Time of uh, the century. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Valerie.